Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video I'm going to show you how to hook up your HD video system to iNav. Now I'm making this video because I've seen quite a few people struggling to connect their HD systems to iNav and a lot of these people are following the Betaflight instructions. Don't, it's not Betaflight, it won't work. So what I intend to do in this video is show you how to correctly set this up in iNav. So let's pop over to the computer and start looking at it. So you can see I'm using iNav 6.0 Release Candidate 1, which came out last Sunday. The day this video came out, it came out a week earlier. A lot of people have seemed to pick up on the Release Candidate, but if you're using iNav 5 still, this will cover what you're doing. There's just some options that won't be there. The Release Candidate, from what we've seen so far, is pretty stable. And to be honest, we had a long-term feature preview before that, which again was pretty stable. So if you wanted to try it out, then you know more than welcome to. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but if you wanna wait for the stable release, we're looking at around sort of mid to late March. But anyway, let's get on with this video. So I'm gonna cover all VHD systems in this video. The setup for all of them now is pretty similar. So what we're gonna do is go into the ports page. Now, if you're following Betaflight instructions, they will say about turning on MSP. Do not turn on MSP. You don't need to do it with iNav. Likewise, there's no CLI commands you need to put in either. What we're gonna do is find our UART. So I'm on UART five. So what I'm gonna do is this peripherals list, we want to enable something on peripherals. Now if you're using the original DJI system, but have not flashed the what the flip DJI firmware, you will want to choose DJI FPV VTX. For all other HD systems, which includes DJI WTF, HD Zero, Walksnell Avatar, and DJI 2 with the O3 stuff, we're gonna choose MSP DisplayPort. Once we've chosen that, we click save and reboot and we're done on this tab. So after the save and reboot, what we need to do is pop into the OSD tab and this is where we set the rest of it up. So at the moment, because we've come from analog, we're gonna be seeing PAL in this. If you're using the original DJI without WTF, you'll still have a cut down list of what you can add. The option to change that has disappeared. It's automatic now. So don't worry that you can't see that. It will automatically change based on your selection on the ports page. But if we are using a different HD system, we will just go to this list and choose the system. So this should be pretty self-explanatory. We have HD zero, we have DJI WTF, and we have Avatar, and we have Betaflight 4.3 compatible mode. Now this is for use with the O3 DJI stuff. And what we can do is just have a look and see what that changes. So. Not a lot because you're running four by three with the standard analog ratio if you're using this BF compact mode. What you'll also notice is you can add absolutely anything you want from a standard analog OSD to the screen. But if it's not within the font set, then you will see a question mark. Now, this is a limitation that we can't really do anything about. This is down to DJI and how they've actually implemented their MSP display port. Also note, it's not canvas mode. They call it canvas mode in the advertising, but canvas mode is completely different. The only OSD that we've had that uses canvas mode is the FreeSky Pixel OSD. And that basically you can specify the coordinates to draw lines and stuff like that. This is still a character-based OSD. So this is using a cut-down version of MSP DisplayPort in the case of DJI O3. So other than getting the name wrong, what DJI have also done is just embed for Betaflight font. Now the Betaflight font is a much smaller character set than you find with iNav. Without going into too much details, based on the old Max 7456 OSD chip, you could have so many characters per page on their font sets. You can have 256 characters basically. On Betaflight and RG Pilot, they use a single page, which is 256 characters, but iNav actually can use up to 512 characters as it uses a two page font set. So as you can imagine, there's quite a lot of characters missing. And that's why using this Betaflight 4.3 compatible mode, you will get it working on the O3, but 
anything that is not there in the Betaflight font, you'll get a question mark for on your OSD. So for example, this wind direction icon, that does not exist in the Betaflight font. So you'll just get a question mark where that icon should be. And the only people who can fix this are DJI. What they need to do is fully implement MSP DisplayPort and allow pilots to upload their own fonts to the goggles. That's the only way that this system will work fully. INAV has done what it can to get something working for you guys, but it's not ideal. Unlike the other systems. So in this list, we also have HD0, DJI WTF and Walksnell Avatar. Now these are all full MSP DisplayPort implementations. So you will see absolutely everything. So all you need to do is just choose which HD system you're using. So I'm using Avatar, so that's what I'm gonna click on. And you'll see that the preview window has resized now to be the correct ratio for the font that you're seeing. So this is the Avatar size. DJI WTF is a little bit bigger and HD0 is smaller. So it just correctly resizes the screen so you can put your icons where you want it. And again, this is now just a standard case of dragging stuff to where you want it on the screen and saving it when you're happy. The really nice thing about the avatar system is it's an odd number along the bottom. So you can actually have things dead central. So the, the crosshair is actually dead central on avatar. And once you're happy with your layout, just click save. And that's it. That's all there is to it. As far as iNav is concerned, this will get your system up and running. If you're not seeing the OSD, check the UART. Check that your RX is going to TX and your TX is going to RX. And also maybe just check the font in your HD goggles to make sure that that's all correct. But other than that, this will get you working. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe and the bell icon that will alert you to more videos that you may find useful, but it will also help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. Thank you very much for watching guys, flow models like you stole them. See ya.